DJ, thank you so much for your time. Daryl Halligan, the guy who revolutionised goal kicking. Did you know, people, that he used a plastic tee for the first time instead of sand in the NRL? And now everyone does it. Daryl, thanks for joining us, mate. What a game that was this morning. Well, it was always going to be, wasn't it? You know what I mean? They started on fire and, um, you know, Papua New Guinea always pulls something out of the bag. And I, I guess first up in a competition, um, in a World Cup in particular, you know, um, you probably don't want to play them, to be fair, because <laughs> they're pretty rugged and they sort of come at you like missiles. But it was more their skill level to get on the board to start the game. And um, you got Johnson out the back from South Sydney, who, pl- who plays on the wing, and they had some tries stripped. A couple mm, of um, mm. hands from Qatar on the on the right hand side could have easily seen uh, Papua New Guinea score like three tries um, in the opening sort of. 10, 15 minutes, but, but um, yeah, uh, Tonga got their way back into the game. Um, they got a massive pack, Tonga, and they started with uh, Kilomatangi, um, South Sydney back rower at hooker. So, so go figure that. You know what I mean? so we, we've got a second rower who weighs about uh, 120 kilos and six foot five playing in the hooking role. So uh, yeah, no, there's um, there's plenty on the table here. Yeah, I've noticed a few people out of positions, players that don't, you know, normally not playing in those positions, but doing it for the international side. Is that just a, a kind of a mix and match going on at the moment? Is it experimenting? Is it just, you know, wanting to put your biggest lunks out there? I mean, what's the what's the theory behind it? Well, Christian Wolf was obviously spoke to uh, Coach Tong and team in the mid-season test when uh, we played them with the Kiwis, um, but was unable to do because he's up here with St Helens, obviously, and he'll be coaching under Wayne Bennett at Redcliffe next year. But I guess he um, just wanted to, one, give his, um, some of his players some time, um, and the kid that um, plays hooker for them, for Tonga, is, is not a, a regular first grader, a guy called Sonny Luke, who sits in behind and, and has played a lot of cup games for the Penrith Panthers. But so I guess he just wanted to get the game started first and then let um, take, the, take the heat out of it in, in a way and then let um, maybe let Sonny Luke come on and um, and then uh, and move and move forward from there and give him some game time. So, um, yeah, uh, there'll be some, you know, in the early rounds of this competition, there'll be the coaches playing with some um, players in different positions. But, uh, you know, towards the back end of the competition, a guy called Sonny Luke will play. Um, nine for the for the Tongan team for sure. Daryl, what's the biggest thing? I want to ask you about all the individual teams, of course. But what's the biggest thing that you take away from when you watch an international tournament like this? Because you know we're so saturated with the NRL, and we get so used to that style of league. I suppose is the question that I'm asking you. Yet international league is actually completely different. It does surprise me every time I see it. I know that probably sounds stupid to you, but it, it just, it's a different kind of way of playing. Yeah, I reckon the. The biggest thing is uh, is how you um, you value the ruck speed uh, of the play in, in international rugby league. I reckon there's a big variable between the start of the ruck um, in the first half and the finish of the ruck in the second half. Um, so the the ruck speed actually gets quicker as the game goes on. Um, so that's I think the big um, you know variable here to see how. how how teams manage that. And it's a difficult thing to manage too because it comes down to ball and play and who's had the most position and all those sort of things. So um, that, that that's a big one. We you got to really work the ref here in the international game. Um, and so that that's what, what uh, you know, like in these early rounds and into the quarters will probably be a big focus for some of our guys anyway, especially our halves. In what way? Is it is it is it being refed in a different style? Is that, is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm just saying, you know, like, you know, with, with, with just the one ref system, you know what I mean? He, he always likes to, or most refs sort of like to set their authority on the game nice and early and what have you, and then the game flows a little bit more towards the back end. So, um, you know, that, that in, in general, that's what's happened. Um, so, therefore, that will more than likely continue to happen, perhaps. Um, but it is about momentum around the ruck, the whole game, and how you generate it, um, then what you do with it once you've got the momentum, and, and if you can capitalise on it. So um, there'll be very, very little uh, across the board in, the, in this World Cup, um, you know, in about um, ten days' time or, or two weeks' time. Um, and yeah, so uh, which will be uh, it's exciting for everyone as well. So the teams that can, um, you know, shift the ball with the most speed and the most accurate at, at doing it with. Uh, the players have got, then um, yeah, 
and, and we've got plenty of them as well. So uh, that means we'll be in the mix as well. DJ Halligan with his 230 games in the NRL for the Bears and the Dogs. and played Not for too a... many good ones. Oh, mate, you were fantastic. <laughs> you retired as the Premiership's leading point scorer, mate, and everyone goes back to 98, that incredible performance you put in. You won a grand final as well and played for the Kiwis 92, 98 and 20 games as well. Let's go through the teams then. Uh, us against Lebanon, a little bit rusty to start with, but again, that's what you expect, don't you? I mean, look, you know, I, I always sort of do the parallels, DJ, with, uh, with the Football World Cup, and there have been teams that have drawn every game in the, in the group stage that have got through and they just pick up momentum, pick up momentum because it's all about survival to start with, keeping all your players fit and fresh and then you get to the business end. Now, this recipe doesn't change, mate, does it? So what did you think of the Kiwis and where do we go from here? Yeah, they caught a short early, um, so we didn't get it all our own way. Um, so therefore the game sort of was a good 20 minutes, 25 minutes into it before we actually sort of deemed control of the game, if you'd like to to put it like that, you know, we we end up winning by 30 to 12, which is probably a scoreline which people would have thought, well, that's not not really enough for the side we've got. And you'd be right, and I think that's the way it's been taken as well. Um, so yeah, you know, we we got through pretty much unscathed. Um, Joey Tarpin, he's got a couple of black eyes and a broken hooter, a nose, but he's had that fixed, so that was okay. And I think the scans come back today, so and and he's all good there. Um, but yeah, it was yeah you know, there were some disappointing things in terms of con- control of the football and and some opportunities that we didn't take. I think was more the wash up of it. So so that's good. Um, uh, Jerome Hughes will put himself back in the mix either this week or next week. I'm not too sure um, when he'll play. He's got a bit of a, a an issue in a quad. Um, so maybe Kieran Foran and um, Dylan Brown lead the team around again. Um, Joey Manu was just outstanding. Yeah, he's, amazing. He's such a cool cat, eh? <laughs> how he carries the ball and how he runs and you know it's a bit unfair with Tedesco at the Roosters that we don't see Joey play fullback more often but um, we've we got our chance now and and, and one we, we all want to see how he goes and we all know what he's going to do but um, yeah, he could be a highlight of this World Cup you wonder though he's such a stunning player and that you know and when he does play in that position whether or not he's going to hang with the Roosters as long as he is or whether he wants to actually get a full start at number one I mean bad damn I mean straight away you know the club I'm thinking of mate I mean, it'd be wonderful to see him wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> have a whisper in his ear there, and we, get, there and, and we get and we get two of us a shit back from rugby that'll do like, that'll well, do yeah, mate. That'll do, yeah. yeah is that what you're talking more than happy yeah, mate it'll be more than happy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Aussie is the other one. Okay, they were comfortable, weren't they? I mean, look, I, I don't care what the... You know, I've been saying this, um, Daryl. I mean, I, I don't care what the rankings are. The rankings put them in fourth. To beat Australia, you know, you yeah. win the tournament. Whoever finishes above them is a pretty good chance of actually taking home the uh, the, uh, the trophy, isn't it? They haven't um, got as many big guys up front in terms of, you know, like uh, Adam Fanua Blake or you know, Junior Paulo, a few of those. So their front rowers are, are more middle players in terms of link and lateral, even though they do go forward. Gillard, uh, Isaiah Yo didn't even play. The Penrith boys didn't play. And their forward packs are, you know, a real challenge because as the game gets on, they've got guys that can make 50 tackles and they've got multiples in them and they've got really good aerobic players and through the middle. Um and that's where I think the real challenge is, you know, um, for the Australian team um, in terms of for teams to beat Australia. And so, therefore, you know, it's a, it'll be a challenge for us too um, to make sure that we continue to move the ball once we've gone forward through the middle. And and they defend it really, really well. And so turn the tables when they do it to us. Therefore, we've got to be able to defend really, really well as well. So, it's, yeah, it'll be a challenging battle. But that one's um, hopefully your... Both sides go, you know, through the early systems, and that's in about three weeks' time. England, massive against Tor Samoa. I'm still stunned, mate, when yep. I think about that game, still stunned about the score. I can tell straight away you were too, weren't you? I, I picked Samoa, yeah. uh, hand, hand on heart, um, and I thought they'd do it easy. Um, and England, you know, we've seen a lot of them play um, and week to week, you know, if you watch enough NRL, you probably don't watch hardly any of the Super League up in the UK. No, I, no, I don't, mate, to be um, honest. No, but sorry. They, were, they were really, really good. Um, they controlled the game. They played with pace. They played, you know, tough English football that maybe we've forgotten about through COVID. Um, and they are. They're a chance. Uh, some are. The worst thing come out of there, their injury was injury list was just horrific. Um, so, and, and again, they bombed a couple of opportunities, but then the game just was too far beyond them. Once, um, you know, once those injuries took 
took into account. I think, and the the big thing here is, Marty, is that you got to use all your players in your twenty four that came away with you yeah. before you can replace anyone in the ah. competition. So they're already down three. So they're down to 21. Um, so they'll have a bit of a mix of what they'll put out um, for their next game. All right, a couple of other quirky things. The, the in goals, mate. Uh, you know, I mean, I actually, I fear for the safety of the players, Daryl, in all seriousness. I mean, they're so small. They're yeah. in a couple of metres. And every time I see a guy sliding into the advertising hoardings or crashing into the cameras or, you know, the tripods and that, I just wince, mate. And I just think, oh, that's such an unnecessary injury if that happens. <laughs> It is, yeah, no, but it's, you know, like every time we've come up here, um, unless you play at somewhere like Wembley, um, which has a really big, you know, like um, grounding around the outside of it, they're generally soccer pitches that have been reformed back into Mm. um, rugby league or rugby pitches, so that's just the the nature of the beast. Um, There's some protection around um, some of of them, but, um, you know, you're right. Um, and the in goal areas, they do have a um, a bit of an effect in the in the game plan in terms of how you're going to play the ball uh, or kick the ball in the last place. So they are really really short. You know, sometimes they can be you know as little as say four meters in in width. Where I think we'd normally play with at least six or or so in the NRL. But anyway, it sort of makes a spectacle of it, makes the game a little bit smaller. And sometimes the pitches are a little bit um, skinnier in yes, width as I well. Yes, I do notice that. Yeah. That, that always um that always sort of makes it interesting as well so um but 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 no one's complaining we uh, we're here for the benefit of the world you know rugby league and trying to trying to showcase the game so um yeah it is what it is more to it all right finally just give us a, you know a, a weather on what you know I've been looking at that I love these stadiums oh, it's I been love awesome. the... the guys have been playing golf <laughs> really they haven't played too much golf yeah no we've been here for well nearly two and a half weeks now the main the main crew um, and honestly, we have had um, maybe two or three showers in that time. Wow! Um, and certainly, certainly haven't had a day where the weather's set in, and um, you know you've had to put all your weather weather gear on and, and whatnot. Brilliant. Um, and like even even today was a glorious day. Um, and I've got to say, the New Zealand Rugby League's done a great job. We're up in York. Um, it's a marvellous city. Um, and uh, we spent a couple of days, obviously, um, in Leeds um, for the Tommy Lulawai game and then shot across to Manchester, which is a Warrington game. Um, but we're based in York, and, God, it's been beautiful. It's, it's where the Vikings are. Yeah. We all went to the Viking yeah. Museum today and pretended we we uh, just watched the old Netflix um, <laughs> uh, series and what have you. Brilliant. Look the Ray, picture. Raynar and everyone, and we grabbed big swords out. And Go on. Pretended we were running amok and rowing our boats it was pretty cool because the pitches look really dry don't they but i love the stadiums i love the fans i love that standing up with the with it you know where you lean in and that and the fans bring so much action and, and 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 excitement with the singing and things it's a super tournament mate we're loving it down here we thank you so much for your time we look forward to catching up with you in the next couple of weeks go the vikings